Hello, everybody. Uh, today, we're going to have a little look at the 2357 Unit 318 or 1605 Unit 007 fault finding. There's a load of confusion with this unit. So today, I'm going to clear this up. And for once and for all, we're going to get this absolutely nailed, OK? So please pay attention because this is what you will have to do 100% in your criteria, OK? So... On the, on the 2357, guys, and on the 1605, you have to cover all of these faults, right? Now, people are putting their evidence in, and they're only putting one or two of them in there. We've got to cover every single fault, okay? So I'm just going to go through each fault one by one and tell you the score with it and give you maybe a little example to help you understand, okay? <clears throat> so the first one <clears throat> we encounter is a loss of supply. This could be a something as simple as a blown fuse in a fuse connection unit. The way I would approach um, a job like that would be something's not working. Therefore, uh, I will open the fuse connection unit. I will test the top with my voltage indicators. Or I'll test the incoming supply, sorry, with my voltage indicators. I will have supply there. I'll test the outgoing, uh, and I won't have supply there. Therefore, logically, it's going to tell me the fuse is blown. I will then safely isolate, remove the fuse, put a new fuse back in, retest voltage again, um, put a new fuse in, take the safe isolation off, put the new fuse in, functional test it, job done. Okay, so that's loss of supply. Overload, you're not going to encounter this very often, so we're going to talk about it. This We can we don't need photographic evidence for an overload. So we can talk about it. What is an overload? What tends to trip out when an overload happens? And what type of meter are we going to use to detect a suspected overloaded cable? For example, a clamp meter. Okay, you can know that information. Short circuit, nerve fault, we need photographic evidence for this. So, so far, loss of supply, we need photos for. And short circuit, nerve fault. Um, and again, this is something tripping out. So you're going to use your insulation resistance tester for this one. Um, again, we're going to safely isolate. Uh, we're going to do an insulation resistance test on the suspected circuit. We're going to find a bad result. We're then going to go around and find the fault, however you decide to find it. Um, whether you break the circuit in half or however you decide to logically find that fault, you're then going to show us the fault. Uh, you're then going to fix the fault. You're then going to retest. Job done. Okay, we're then going to so we've got a bad result, good result, and the fault. Okay, transient voltage. Again, this is something we're going to talk about. A short unwanted spike in voltage. Um, you're not going to get pictures of this, so don't worry about it. We'll have a chat about it. You're just going to tell me what is a transient voltage lightning strike. Or an example is you're in a dark room. You put uh, a plastic light switch on and the rock is broken and you get a little blue flash. That is actually transient voltage. Transient means to move. So it's voltage that's moving. That's simple as that. So that's transient voltage, okay? Loss of line. A great example of this would be a ring final circuit with an open line conductor. So where you do your end-to-ends, you've got an open line. You go around, you find the open line. Um, you could do this a number of ways. You know, you can just join... R1 and R2 together and go around testing with your plug. Nice and easy way of finding that. When you get the open result, you know that's uh, where you are between two points. If you find the open ring, you show us the fault again with the line conducted out. You fix it. You retest it. Job done. We're a full ring final test for that one, please. Um, incorrect phase rotation. Again, if you don't encounter this, we can talk about it. What is a phase rotation test? How do we do it? Um, by the use of a phase rotation meter, isn't it? And also... Um, what could be what could go wrong with incorrect phase rotation? So, for example, a motor could spin backwards, couldn't it, or a saw uh, causing maybe a dangerous situation. Uh, but I don't need photos for that. High resistance joint, I do need photos. So again, I'm going to use the ring final circuit for this. So the line and the neutral we know should be the same, or roughly the same, or within zero point zero five of each other um, when you do an end to end. But if you do the line conductor and it comes out, for example, at 0 0.10 ohms, but you do the neutral and it comes out at 1.96, we know there's a problem with the neutral um, conductors. So you're going to go around again, find the loose connection, tighten it up, retest, get the good readings, job done. Um, and the final one is a component fault. So this is a broken switch, a broken socket, a broken light, a broken anything to do with a fixed wiring. It's not a broken microwave, a broken cooker. It's not um, anything like that. It's got to be fixed wiring, right? Uh, it could be a broken thermostat. It could be um, a broken coil in, a, in an immersion heater. It could be a cracked socket. It could be anything... That's a component on a fixed wiring system. Again, we need photos of that. You find it and fix it, okay? So just to recap, photos needed for <clears throat> loss of supply, short circuit, loss of line, 
high resistance joint and component faults. And we can discuss only, which means I don't need photos for overload, transient voltage, or incorrect phase rotation. Guys, I hope that's cleared it up. It's a massive thing that it's holding you guys back because you're not understanding this so all the faults on the 1605 and the 2357 must be covered hope you've enjoyed this video and i hope that you start to implement this with immediate effect